Do you have a passion that is so specific you think there is no way I could start a YouTube channel around this? Today, we're going to change your mind. We'll be sitting down with Shay Manning, a free spirit equestrian who has not only turned her horse training program into a six figure business, but she has been able to monetize a YouTube channel and a boutique that are both grossing over 100K per year. Come join us in the Cypress Room. This conversation starts now. Welcome back to the Cypress Room, where we dive deep on influencing with integrity. This is a podcast for creators, and I am Christina Mascari. And I'm Maggie Honeycutt. And we are coming to you with a, another remote interview. And this one I'm really excited about because we have a huge YouTuber and TikToker, and she's running a horse business, which I know nothing about, but Maggie knows a lot about. <laughs> and so we're going to get into all of it. But today we want to welcome to the Cypress Room, Shay Manning from Free Spirit Equestrian. Hi, my name is Shay Manning, and I am so excited to be on the Cypress Room channel. I think this is going to be an amazing opportunity to talk about horses and training and my equine businesses, and I can't wait to dive into more details regarding that. Yes, we are so excited to have you here, and I have to confess, like this is a little bit of a fangirl, fangirl moment, moment for me. <laughs> My daughter and I are huge fans of Shay's channel, and it's been sort of a bonding thing for us to watch her content together. So I am thrilled to have Shay with us. And I just want to read a little bit about Shay for those of you who aren't familiar with her channel. Shay owns a little piece of heaven up in Michigan called Free Spirit Equestrian. Her passion in life is working with horses from all different walks of life and revitalizing them through equine wellness, training, and care. She dedicates all of her time to her horses, training, riding program, her farm, and her equestrian businesses. She has always been determined and passionate about taking her love for horses and forming a career from that spark. She shares her journey on her YouTube platform, and her TikTok account where she has almost 700,000 followers across Woo! those platforms. Yes. The other incredible <laughs> thing is she has amassed over 70 million views and 684 videos in just two, two years, years on her YouTube channel, which is incredible. And I can't wait to hear more about it. So welcome to the podcast, Shay. Thanks. You really know how to start it off and make me feel special. <laughs> I know. I, every time we read people's bios back to them, it's like, wow, they send them to us. But when they actually hear somebody else read them, they're like, whoa, I'm actually I am amazing. This. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, you are. You are, though. No. I mean, this is really, we are so excited to have a YouTuber on yes. and a very successful YouTuber. So we are just going to dive right in because we want to learn all about your strategy, how you have monetized your passion. Like, I think that is just absolutely incredible that you have been able to take your love for horses and monetize it on social media. That's incredible. So let's go back a little bit, kind of a few years back on your journey. Tell us how you got to the point where you were like, hmm, maybe I should record what I'm doing and put it out for people. Like, what was that journey for you? Yeah, that's a great question. So it all started, first off, I got my bachelor's degree in criminal justice, and I was working for the government for about six years, so right out of college. And while it taught me a lot of great like life skills and business skills and marketing and things like that, at the same time, I just never felt like I could fully express my creativity and you know channel that outlet. So of course, I've always been passionate about horses since the day I was born. Like I'm a true believer that if you're a real horse girl or, or horse guy, it's just like born in your blood. It really is. And it's always been a passion that's fueled me. But at the same time, I was always told growing up, like, don't make your passion like your career. You can't make money from horses because they're expensive. And I kind of let that sit there for a while. And then finally, once COVID hit, a lot of things changed in the world and a lot of things changed for myself and my perspective. And I took a big risk and decided I'm going to be done with my government job while there was a lot of like positive experiences. At the same time, I just really felt the push to follow my passion. And I had felt that, you know, forever, but for a lot over those last 12 months. So I decided to go ahead and leave that job. And at that time I was working on my lesson program, which was still new because we had bought our farm a few years ago. And I was teaching lessons after work. And now I'm like, I'm going to go full blown with this program. And I'm just going all in because 
in order to be successful, successful, you have to go all in. It can't just be, oh, I'm going to, you know, dip my toes in. It's just all in or all out. And once I did that, it was just a huge shift. So my husband has always watched YouTube. Okay. He is a big car guy and he's honestly obsessed with YouTube. And he was always saying, Hey, you're already doing this. Just start filming what you're doing. Like you have the, you have a personality for it. What you're doing with horses is somewhat unique. And he, he was just telling me that I'm special and that I need to pursue this avenue. I'm a little bit stubborn, so I don't do anything until I truly want to do it. But that also kind of sat with me. And then once I quit my government job and was, you know, settled in with the program and that exploded, I said, yeah, you know what? I am working with horses and training them, you know, besides the lesson program. And I should start filming this because who knows, maybe it'll help somebody out there. Maybe it will inspire somebody, whatever the case may be. So I just started recording and my first YouTube video, first off, I filmed it like vertical, like a TikTok video. That's how bad it was. That's where I started. Right. And, um, I just am mortified watching the first videos, but you got to start somewhere. And then I just did it. And once I dedicated myself, that's it. I was all in. I would research every single day, hours and hours. I'd spend hours trying to perfect my craft, trying to learn as much as I can about YouTube and the analytics and the system itself, editing everything. Sorry, I don't want to like ruin your other questions because I'm going into a no, show. Oh, wow. That's okay. This <laughs> like, is like I'm, my no, dream. I'm going. Industry, just so you know. <laughs> We're speaking horses and YouTube. Like me and Meg are like, how did what? we get here? I know. Thank you, Jesus. For this interview. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm going for it. So yeah, yeah like be, starting at that point, it's just crazy to think that you really just press record. I mean, that's very simplistic terms. But the fact that where I am now was all based on exactly that, hitting that record button. You know, I love I, that. I almost want to cry. Like it's such a, yeah. it's such a surreal, surreal yeah. experience, yeah. you know? Yeah. No, but it, it's true. I mean, it's just, it's, you got to get out there and you just got to do it. I mean, it, it's just, it's as simple as that. And if you just stay consistent and determined, it, it'll get you so far. And at least it worked for me so far. Yeah. And it's just a beautiful thing to, to realize like, Hey, push record. And that first video is going to be terrible but at least you put it out. I mean, that's, you know, we're constantly with this podcast. It's like a different beast than my YouTube channel. And we like, every time we do a video, we figure something out. And if we haven't gone back and watched our first one that we recorded in June, but if we did, we probably would be like, Oh my gosh. (laughs) Yeah. But you you do, you just improve something every time. Like you can't watch all the videos and then put it out. Perfect. Like you, you do that. You like dive into the analytics, what's working, what's not. It's definitely like not get Rick rich quick virality no, it's like not. just putting the work in yes. because you want to see if you can go somewhere and i just love that and it totally echoes like everything that we've done so we're yes. we're not just preaching to ourselves <laughs> like know. it really no. does, this really does work if you want to put the effort into it yeah, yeah and there's something about just taking the step of faith and getting started and not having to have it all figured out from the beginning, like yes. just figure it out as you go, learn something along the way, but you just have to get moving. Like more can happen when you're moving forward than when you're just standing still. Well, and I love that you had your husband, like who is the YouTube fan seeing like, and what he likes and then being like, seeing what you like and be like, this could work and sparking yes. that idea in you. Because honestly, what made, like I had a YouTube channel, but it was just like, I put videos up for a blog to teach people how to paint furniture And, you know, then I had kids and it was just like there, it was not a thing. And then I got really into makeup videos back in the heyday in 2017, 2018. I would watch Jacqueline Hill and Manny and Laura Lee like all day long. And I didn't even wear makeup. And I just thought to myself, oh my gosh, like, what if I did this for furniture? Because no one's really doing this. And I took all those things that I learned from those videos because I loved YouTube. And then I was able to make a YouTube channel off of that and start having videos that were successful just because there was that passion and that love. And I was like, well, I'm a weirdo who watches YouTube all day. So there might be other weirdos out there like me that want to watch it. That's great. I love that. So tell us about, you know, you're two years in, correct, to this YouTube journey. About two and Um, a half. Yeah. Yeah. Two and a half. So what as you have grown on YouTube and and you're doing your business along, alongside of that, how, 
I mean, how are you managing it all? Do you, are you a strategic person who says, okay, I'm going to be doing this and this and this on the farm. So here's these pieces of content, or are you really just living your regular life, doing what you have to do and just taking the camera along with you? What is the process of putting out and creating the content like for you? That's an excellent question. So time management is huge, right? And it's definitely a skill that you do have to craft and perfect over time. And I also do want to just be straightforward and say, I'm a very high energy person. I'm naturally pretty driven. So I do think that benefits me. Um, just, you know, everybody's different. And that's just something I think I was blessed with is just having the energy to do things and, and the drive. And I want to say like the drive is huge. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't love horses and what I do. You get what I'm saying? I think that's why with the government job, yeah. like I had drive, but at the end of the day, like there wasn't any fuel. So the passion is number one. That's going to help you, you know, put yourself out there and, and get things done. Now, in regards to the more specifics and analytics, when it comes to the planning, I do plan things out. So I honestly, I just have on my phone every single day. Usually it's about a month planned out. Of course, I have things like in the future, like big dates, like four shows or whatever we're doing. But I literally will write out, this is kind of crazy, pretty much like a time frame. Like I have between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. to feed the horses. And then, you know, 10 to 2 p.m. to edit this video. And every single day is split is planned out hourly. And then I sounds nuts when I say it all out. <laughs> but, no, this um, is really good. <laughs> But then I also make sure I'm planning this specifically, but I give myself like room to push things to another day, right? Um, so that way I don't get burnt out or if something comes up, it's not like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to complete this task. So my goal is to complete my tasks every day or within within that relative time frame, And that's exactly what I do. And my days are usually planned out between, I get up between anywhere between 6.30, 7.30 a.m. And then I'm usually done around depending on the day, like five or six. And I think it's so important that you give yourself every day, like time to unwind and I get eight hours of sleep. So that's the other thing I give myself, you know, three to four hours a day, like in the evening to relax and then go to sleep. That way I can go hard the next day. So I'll plan that out. And then I do have things planned in the future. Like if we have a big event and then videos, I do plan those out too. So it's not just well, I'm going to go out here and do this and film it today. I actually have the the next two months planned out, like how many videos I'm I'm requiring for myself in March, how many videos I'm requiring for myself in April. I'll write down all those video topics and then I will add in like, let's say this video topic didn't happen for whatever reason. You know what I'm saying? Then I will have ex extra topics there. So I am getting even more strategic with that. I didn't used to plan out the months of videos per se. I would just have an idea of like, oh, I'm going to be doing this, doing that. But I am now because I have other businesses and other things that I'm trying to keep track of and, and grow. So yeah, I would say it's pretty strategic and planned out, but I also, you know, enjoy my time. Like it's, it's not, it, it's not so, so stuffy and um, strategic where I'm not enjoying what I'm doing. I think it's just yeah. actually therapeutic for me to put it in my phone. I think it's actually more for uh, just the organization and categorization in my brain versus like it's an actual, you know. <laughs> right. Well, it's an encouragement to me because I'm like an ADHD person and that's those yes. are the other types of people that are successful on YouTube because I have bursts of like huge productivity, but then I have bursts of procrastination and where I shut down. So yep. you're, this is actually inspiring to me because of it's like, because those are practices that I want to have. Like I want to be able to shut it down at five o'clock. I want to be able to get eight hours of sleep and I'm just not managing my time well. So yeah. actually having a schedule every day, it's something my husband has said to me over and over again. So you're just like <laughs> encouraging me to be healthy and to be like driven and to be successful and to still take care of yourself. Because I think a yes. lot of YouTubers don't take care of yourself. And they burn and so out be able quit. To see, yeah. And to see you being successful and how much you've done in just a short amount of time, like I can see why you are, because you're taking care of yourself. You're taking care of your mind. You're taking care of your body and you're getting your work done. So yeah. I kind of love that. And it would be pretty easy to do. So it's just committing. Yeah. To it. And, yeah. And I will say there's other challenges because we have horses involved and a lot of my, actually pretty much all of my filming's outside. So that's a huge factor too. And yeah. um, I'm in Michigan where it's like, it was 70 degrees two days ago and it's literally like sunny. It's snowing. 
So that sometimes is where you have to be a little more fluid and creative. And that's why I'm saying sometimes certain things don't work out the way they do. And sometimes horses, things don't always go as, as planned with them. So you do have to have wiggle room. But I think having a general plan, but not getting upset when it doesn't go perfect, you know. Yeah. The key. And this makes sense for the volume of content that you put out, because I was really amazed at how much content you're actually posting on a weekly basis. And I want to talk a little bit about just the logistics of that, because you are posting on TikTok and on YouTube. So how are you filming the horizontal and the vertical? Do you have some, someone helping you? Like, what does that process look like to create content for both platforms kind of at the same time? Yeah. And it's a lot of work to keep up with both platforms. And again, sometimes you got to, you know, really push yourself to be like, okay, I got to get it all out there. But some of the content is repurposed. So I will, for example, like film a YouTube video and then it's all edited. And then I can take that whole edited version and um, edit it in my editing app, which I use Splice personally, and then just make it, you know, vertical content. Other times, like during the week, I will just focus on posting vertical content. Like I'm filming this for TikTok or YouTube. And it's kind of funny because my husband will help me film sometimes, but he also has a full-time job. He works for Ford. He's an engineer. So our thing is when he comes out, right when he comes out and I give him the phone, he's like, TikTok or YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> You've got him. So obviously, <laughs> awesome. Vertical and horizontal is what we mean, but it's just what we say, which is kind of funny. Yeah. Um, but no, honestly, I'm pretty much doing a lot of it myself. I do have two assistants that help me with lessons or if I'm out of town. And lately, I've been integrating them into more of what I do because things are expanding and growing, especially with the boutique and everything. So I will actually have them out to help. For example, we just did a spa day with the horses. And I'm like, there's no way I can I can first off wash my one horse who has tons of hair Lumiere alone. So that's a, a chore in itself. And wash two foals. Plus I want it filmed. So I'm like, I need my assistant out here to help me. But primarily I'm just doing it myself. Once in a while, I'll hand it to a student or, or somebody and be like, hey, can you film this real quick? But otherwise I'm pretty much flying solo most of the time and it's not too bad. It works out. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You should consider making some of your students interns and you can give them I know. discount on <laughs> lessons and they can learn social media at the same time. Well Hopefully they don't hear this, but sometimes they're not that good at filming. <laughs> okay. Are you I'm here like, at college? Because oh. <laughs> you definitely can get an intern from a local college if it's not too far away. Because you like yes. someone would love to work for you for free yes. just to get the experience and have it on their resume. That would be a, that is a good idea. Let's put that yeah. out there. Put that out. And you're so driven, you'll figure out how to do it. I have no yep. doubt. <laughs> I love that you're, and do you do all your editing too? It sounds like yep. you do. Oh yep. my gosh. And to be honest, I edit everything from my phone because it's just easier. Like, you know, by the time I film everything, I don't want to upload it to the computer and blah, blah, blah. I, I actually, because I have animals in the house, animals outside and a husband, I just sit in the car. I edit everything in the car pretty much. I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, this sit is my great. butt in there. This is my little studio. <laughs> no, but honestly, like this is so, what you're saying is so attainable for people. They think yes. that they have to have editors and all this stuff. And like, you have literally learned how to edit and record and all the things that you need just by watching other people's videos and figuring it out. And you're still running a business and you're doing content. Like, this is amazing. And you said you're getting eight hours of sleep and shutting down at five. Okay. This is, yep. I think this is going to be an encouragement to a lot of people because when it gets hard, they just think, oh, well, I don't have an editor and I don't have this, so I can't do it. But if you do just stick to it, you can do it and you can be successful. I mean, I just want to tell you because I've been on YouTube for a long time, but I've been full time for five years. You have twice as many videos as me and you have three times as many views as me. So, and it's, you've done this in a matter of two years. And so it is just a matter of like sticking to it, saying, I'm going to do this and putting your hand to it and doing the work. You don't have to have all these things. No, you really don't. I think that can be an encouragement for anyone out there who is thinking of starting to just record whatever they're doing and put it out there that you don't need all the fancy equipment. You don't have to 
know everything. You can go to Google University and YouTube University and go. learn the craft. You can edit from a phone. You don't need a fancy camera or a computer. So I think that's awesome. And I want to know though, because we, okay, at the Cypress Room, we just got monetized on YouTube. Yay! And <laughs> it's <just fun. laughs> Thank you so that much. Amazing. It felt like a very big milestone yeah, for us. Huge. But I want to hear for you, what was your journey to monetization on social media? How long did that take you to monetize your business through YouTube and TikTok? Yeah, I think that's a great question. So it actually, I feel like it happened relatively quick in the scheme of things. It took me six months to get monetized. And awesome. I think my first check was $100 from YouTube. So <laughs> okay, that's encouraging us too, because we're at $11 right now. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so it took me six months. And that was in November of 2021. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, so it, it took six months. And I was pretty proud of myself. And this is just kind of piggybacking off what you said previously. And I always say this, um, and I want to preface with, I am proud of myself and I believe in myself, but I don't think I'm nothing special in the sense of just what you said. I don't have like this huge team. I didn't come from money. I don't have all these people in my life who have had all these skills that, you know, nobody guided me either. I, it was all based off self-research. Um, you know what I mean? And just putting in that dedication. So, so that's the thing. Anybody can truly do this if you just put your heart, mind, soul, passion, and creativity and consistency. Consistency is key with horses, with people, with business, with whatever you do. And getting that first check, I had watched one of my husband's favorite channels, which is Goon Squad, their car, a car um, channel. And I think it was right before I got my first check. I mean, they have millions of followers, right? And they, they make so much money off YouTube. They got that first $100 check and that sealed it for them. Like, we can do this. And then it was like, when I got that check too, I was like, I can, I, it was like a real epiphany. Like I can actually do this. Like I was doing it, but now I'm like, I know this is going to work. I know I'm going to be successful at this because number one, I'm not going to quit. And I'm just going to be my authentic true self and put that out there. And I think it will catch on. That's I it. love that. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're just like, you're like literally preaching to our hearts right <laughs> yes. now. You're going to do it. Just, we can't, can't do, do it because there. I mean, no, you can. Along the way, along the way, you are going to absolutely think that you can't. And I, I oh, yeah. for us, like we are followers of Jesus, and so when we get that opposition to something that we feel like He's called us to, we give it a name. We're like, that's the enemy trying to stop me from mm -hmm. fulfilling my purpose. Because there are so many times, Maggie has to talk me off the ledge. It hasn't happened lately, <laughs> but before we hit record on this podcast, she's like. Uh, well, I'm like, why are we doing this? I don't understand what's going on. We're never going to be yeah. anything. And she's like, listen, like I'm here to, to, to bear this load with you, but like we're doing this because God told us to. So like, yeah. let's go turn on. The yeah. We call those and YouTube feel... meltdowns. I know. And it still happens. It still Thank happens. So don't think like, I mean, I still, you can still get imposter syndrome. It's just part of like being out in the public, but I love that you, yes, just like, because we've really felt we need to celebrate this milestone because we're like, we're going to make tens of dollars and we're joking. But at, at the same time, it's like, no, this is a big deal. Only 6% of YouTube channels get monetized. So we need to celebrate these little wins along the way. And so I just, oh my gosh. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, though, like whether this is on or off camera, whatever, you guys, first off, when you approached me, I, I was just really excited. Like, oh my gosh, someone asked me to be on a podcast. Like, this is cool. And then I was looking at the channels, like this channel has potential. This podcast has so much potential. You guys are so professional. Mm -hmm. You're so beautiful. You're so lovely and encouraging. And everything was so professionally executed, but also uh, so meaningful. So that's why I didn't hesitate for a second. I was like, yes. I was on vacation. Oh I was on a cruise, Maggie, gosh. when you reached out. I was like, yes, Kyle, I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Like, yeah, of course. We, we, that we couldn't believe that you said yes. Like, when, I know, you know, oh, we're shooting our shot all the time. Shay, we are dropping in people's DMs. Do it. Are, and most of the people we've had on are friends and are DIYers. So we are just so excited to have people like, because they're you like, 
like I was telling Maggie, I don't know anything about the equestrian world. I think when I introduced you, I was like, she does horses. That's probably the wrong. I was probably not supposed to say that. (laughs) And I was watching some of your content last night preparing for the interview. And I'm just like, there is this whole world that I don't know anything about that I would have no exposure to. And like, I'm learning about Western and English and that you have to actually like break a horse. I didn't think about that. Like you can't a horse, you can't just like get on a horse and ride it. They're not like, you have to train them. I was like, it's a whole intricate process. Yeah, It's just so cool. And to look at the amount of views you have, it cannot just be people who are in, who know about equestrian and do horse lessons that are horse lovers, like Maggie and her daughter. But it has to be other people, too, that are just like, this is wild. I didn't even know this existed. So can you talk to us a little bit about your community and the types of comments you get and like what your what your community and your family is like? What are you hearing? Or, you know, I just want to know who's watching you. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's awesome. So first off, my community is referred to as horse lovers. So hey, horse lovers, lovers. that's what I say every time, (laughs) every YouTube video. So they are horse lovers. and. It's funny that what you were just talking about, it was also a surreal moment for me. And I think it's really crazy and incredible when I get the comments on long format videos, you know, not just the shorts, not just YouTube shorts, people saying, I don't even like horses and I'm addicted to your channel. And that's when you're oh like, my gosh. what? Like you like this enough to watch this, to watch me and the horses and you're not, you don't even like horses. Um, So that's just really funny that you brought that up. But also what's really inspiring is hearing people say, hey, I've always wanted to get into horses and I started taking riding lessons because of you. Or I've had this fear of cantering, which which is like running, if you don't know what that means, but this fear of cantering. (laughs) And um, and I did it. I did it because you inspired me to do that. And it just some amazing comments. And my audience, I think it is a mix. I don't know the exact percentage because obviously you don't get this analytic analytic, but I think it's a mix of individuals who own horses, people who don't own horses, but, or used to people who have always loved horses, but never been involved. And then that other category of that they've never been around horses. They don't even like horses, but I would say a lot of my community is people who are my age. So like in their thirties, all the way up into their sixties, seventies, and eighties. So a lot of people who don't get to experience horses in person, I think they get their fix through the channel, which is amazing. I mean, you know, from my perspective, I want to give them all I possibly can because I want to, I want to share this lifestyle and what I do for people who may not have access to horses for whatever reason. But I also have a lot of fans that are younger and anytime I go to a horse event, it can be a horse auction. It can be a show, it can be local, anything horse related, at least a minimum of two people come up and fangirl, which is so sweet. They want pictures. And again, just circling back to, I just feel like I'm this person doing my thing and putting that information out there. You know, I don't go, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm Shay, the celebrity from Free Spirit Equestrian. Like, (laughs) no, I just, I'm just me doing me and sharing, sharing my journey with the world. So I mean, it's really crazy. I mean, some of these girls will come up and they're shaking, like, like, it's like I'm Taylor Swift or something. And I'm like, this is so nuts, but it's so important to realize the impact you have on your community and especially the horse industry. It's huge. And that's why you, you just need to always be cognizant of, of what you're putting out there and and how you're presenting yourself, you know, because at the end of the day, I, I am a role model for equestrians out there. And that's a big job. You know, it's a big job and it, it's so interesting and it's so lovely to, to see my community. And the comments, I will say, most of them are so positive. They are just full of love and motivation and encouragement. And they're always there for me. Like they always, they always have my back. Like it's pretty rare I get a hate comment. And if I do, it's always something so outlandish that it's like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> just going to ignore that. Um, but I would say, yeah, there's a lot of positivity and it's, it's been great. And I even had this other YouTuber, um, Raleigh link, like she reviewed me and she's pretty tough to impress. And she did this whole YouTube video, which she's judging horse trainers 
And she gave me an A plus, which is nuts because she typically is very hard on everybody. So that was a really big thing that happened. And my community got very involved with that because they obviously saw the video, but they were all really proud of me. And there's something else that I want to say in regards to my community. So she, this was way after she posted that video, but recently she made a post on the community post saying, who is your least favorite equestrian? And I read through all the comments. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. I know, whatever. But like, I know. I read through all the comments and there were hundreds of them. And at least 10 people were like, free spirit equestrian is my favorite. So Uh I was like, nobody else said they had a a favorite or anything. And I was like, holy cow, like the love is just coming through. And then people started saying that they're like, the free spirit equestrian team is strong. And like, nobody said they didn't like my channel. It just was so random. Like just to see that community on the flip side, it it was just wild to me. So my community is really awesome. And that makes like, if you're watching this, yeah, (laughs) that makes so much sense because that's, you know, where things are just shifting. I mean, they've always been community centered, but I think we all got blinded by the views and the how many subscribers and the silver play button and all the things. Mm -hmm. And it does really come down to the community and the stories that you're telling. Like, you know, I've had people come up to me and say, you know, I was lit really depressed and I watched your channel and like painting furniture is therapy for me. And there's got to be so many stories like that out there that you don't even get to hear. Um, And so just to be reminded that it's a person on the other side of that number and there's a person on the other side of that comment, um, it's just really beautiful that your obedience to put your hand to work and to put it out there and to share yourself can encourage other people. Like, it's just one of the things we talk about so much about social media. Like, it gets a bad rap sometimes, but there's so many beautiful things that happen through it. It's very powerful. It really is. And your engaged community is kind of bucking the trends people are saying are happening right now because you're creating long form content and your videos are long. They're 20, 30 minutes and your views are so good. Incredible (laughs) in an age where people are saying long forms over. It's all about short form video. This just goes to show when you do put your hand to it, you do it with excellence and enthusiasm and passion that your people are going to show up because they feel the connection. They're invested in you and your channel in your farm and in what you're doing there. And so you've seen the success from that despite whatever trend is happening. And I think that's a real key to longevity in social media is just that engaged community. who's going to get behind you, you know, no matter what you're doing and putting out because they just, they love what you do. And I can sense that. Well, I want you to talk about your horse girl. I mean, that's basically (laughs) the reason that we're doing this interview because you guys are fans and followers and community. That's honestly how this all started because she was like, mom, what if you could interview Shay? And I was like, well, maybe I could. I'll email her. She was like, mom, you have to talk about me. You have to talk about me to her because if she saw you in person, she would fangirl. And we found your channel when you got Belle and found out Belle was pregnant and mm-hmm. you went through the whole thing of having uh, Ezzy, her foal. And we were just so invested in that whole process. We were watching the countdown. It was like, crazy. All of it. And, and I told you this off camera, but it's like a bonding thing for us. And I love that there is a channel that we can watch together that I don't have to worry about the content or, you know, words, words being set, you know, stuff that I wouldn't want her to see. Like she loves your content. It's educational. It's, you know, it's fun. It's entertaining. Like we're invested in all your horses and the ones that you bring home. And it's like, I don't know, something that has brought us together because, you know, she's always kind of watched horse channels, but yours was the first one that I was like, Oh, I like this. This is fun. Oh, that's so cool. And, and it was fun that the way that you shared that journey to your foal being born, because that really like just hooked us. And now we want to see as he grow up and oh. like you're sharing this whole journey. So 
it has been um, just so fun. And I love your channel. You're right. Your channel appeals to like such a wide variety of like ages and even people who don't love horses. I can see how they would be totally hooked because it is fun to just watch your journey and your days as you take us along. I also love your interactions with your husband and seeing how he supports you and how he also loves horses. So I wanted you to talk a little bit about that. Um, we see your husband, Kyle, on the channel, and it's obvious he is a support for you. And you told us how he kind of inspired this YouTube journey. But tell us a little bit more about how he is a um, cheerleader for this business, how he kind of supports you behind the scenes and what that means to the success of Free Spirit Equestrian. Yeah, so we always joke and say that Kyle is is my manager because <laughs> I'm always um, bouncing ideas off him or he's always saying, oh, you know, in, in a non non-critical way, just as, you know, I mean, we're husband and wife, obviously, but, oh, maybe you should do this and that. And I, first off, I want to say Kyle has a huge fan club. Like it is off the charts <laughs> on the <laughs> channel. Awesome. Anytime they see him, these women are just going absolutely wild. And I just, it cracks me up. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw that in there. We always laugh about yeah. it. Oh, but yeah, he does so much for the channel and for the just everything we do. And I am just so grateful to have such a supportive spouse and the fact that it's not just, it's not just that he just shows up and, and puts things into action, like helping out, but he actually cares. Like he's passionate about it too. He's passionate about our success, about the channel, the farm. And it's, it's a lifestyle for us. Like everything we do, even the businesses, like it's all a lifestyle. So it all intertwines. And specifically the things that he does to help is he will film me when possible. Like I said, it doesn't always happen that way, but he does a lot of the filming. And he also helps me with the boutique, like pack orders all the time. Like one time I had to edit a whole YouTube video like that morning. I'm like, Kyle, there's a hundred orders that need to be packed, but I have to get this video out today. And guess what? He sat in here. This is where we pack orders right now. Sat in here while I was editing in the car, got them all done. And didn't say one word other than when we went to lunch, like you buying lunch today, <laughs> but no, <laughs> he expects nothing in return. You know what I mean? It, it's, it, and there's never, I can't think of the word. There's never like that, that feeling of resentment. There's no resentment into all he puts in. We just um, got all of our stalls and he's been installing them. I mean, what man is like, yeah, I'll spend my whole, you know, two days just busting my butt getting all these stalls you know deconstructed and installing new stalls it's never just there's never any griping it's just this is what needs to be done and this is what's going to be done because we're building this dream life together right i mean yes it's my channel obviously and these are kind of my pursuits but i don't actually like view them that way i view my successes are his successes and he knows that we're hustling right now because we're just trying to, to build our life together because, you know, you don't know how sustainable everything is going to be like long term. And, you know, we're young right now. So we're just we're just really, really pushing it out there. And he is just amazing. I mean, he, he helps take care of the horses. If we need round bales out, he comes and does that. I mean, he just sacrifices so much time. And it's it's incredible. Like, I just I don't think I could ever find somebody like this again. They just. They're few and far between, and he's just amazing. I just have to buy him like a new car every once in a while. That's about it. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. It's <laughs> I'm just kidding. We we have seen echoed a lot in the creators that we have that are married that have family. Their family is a support to them, and they mm -hmm. care as much about their channel or their Instagram or their business. You know, it's like a it is. It's like a family legacy. It's something that they invest in, even though it's not technically theirs, but it is at the same time, because, you know, when you own a business, it's very integral into, it's not just work and I shut off work and then I'm myself. It's mm -hmm. very all integrated. And mm -hmm. so when they have buy-in and they care about seeing you succeed and seeing the brand succeed, though, I mean, literally everybody we've interviewed has talked about their spouse and what a support person they are and how they have bolstered them up and how they care just as much as they do. So 
I love that. Yeah. I love that. We're Kyle fans too. (laughs) Are you part of the Kyle fan club? (laughs) And some in handy. And what else can you get asked for, you know? (laughs) Okay. So you've talked about the boutique a lot. You keep dropping these little nuggets in. Um, so I wonder if you could just do a little breakdown. I've watched this video that you have, but it was over a year ago on your streams of income. So I'd love Mm -hmm. to hear what they are today. If you can give our audience that breakdown so they know where you're getting all your income from. Yeah. So I say there's three main ones. So one is my riding program. So for my students, so it's like an all encompassing horsemanship program where people come to the farm and they ride and they actually pay a tuition. So they dedicate for the season. They commit to the season. And just because I have so many other things, it's just the best way that I could structure that. So we have that. And then along with that, you know, we go to other events. We'll go on big horse camping trips like out of state. The biggest one we went on was last year. We went to Missouri and hauled four horses down there and rode for a week. And we'll go to horse shows and attend different events. So that is one income stream. And I would say it's Well, right now it's probably the second biggest income I have currently. So the writing program as of last year, because we just did all of our taxes, it made around six figures. So that is a a six figure business and that's Free Spirit Equestrian LLC. Yes, yes, yes. So, (laughs) So then we have my biggest income. So I'm kind of doing these in the order that I started them versus, you know, the income levels. So then obviously we have YouTube. So my YouTube is under SLM Productions LLC. So that's the actual business name. But of course the channel's named Free Spirit Equestrian because that is my brand for my social media and also my farm's name, which is Free Spirit Farm. So the social media is, like I said, my biggest avenue of income and it makes over six figures. So yes, really well. (laughs) It's actually really bizarre saying that because you just never think it would really get to this point. And, and here we are. So that has been such a blessing and such an amazing experience. And also that when I say six figures, I am specifically talking about the ad rev that I just get from, That's awesome. from YouTube. Do you, so a lot of people ask, how do you get paid from YouTube? So YouTube is actually Google, right? So I get paid from Google AdSense. And we get paid from the ads that are ran throughout our videos. You know, when you're watching a video and then you see an ad that is put in, that's how we get paid. And we get paid per RPM, which is rate per milia. And that is for a thousand views. So currently my RPM is at $13.26. Now that can change every single day. It changes during the month. That's a great RPM. Mine is similar. Mine's a little bit lower than yours. I think mine's hovering at maybe like 10. It hovers at like 10 to 12. But it's pretty high. I mean, I've talked to other people that I know that do DIY and they do more like crafty things and they get way more views than me, but their RPM was at like $5 or something. So I'm like, oh, and you don't, there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just like who wants to advertise on your channel. So it could be broken down to like what your niche is or just like where your audience is or, you know, the demographics or the age. You really don't know. YouTube doesn't give us that information. But the cool thing to note is that YouTube is actually charging for a thousand views. They're actually charging double that. So like Shay or I get to keep, you know, $10 per a thousand views, but YouTube gets like the other half of that. So your channel actually per a thousand views is bringing in almost $22, $25, which is awesome because that's like Mm -hmm. a great thing to think about when brands come to you and want you to put like a commercial in your video. It's like, well, YouTube is charging like $22 for a thousand views. So if I'm specifically putting it in and I'm doing the ad copy, you can double that, you can triple that. So that's a good way to come up with a rate if you've never, you know, charged for having an ad actually in your YouTube channel that you're going to do yourself. Yeah, exactly. So that's how I primarily get paid from the YouTube channel is is through YouTube and essentially Google AdSense. But there's also sponsorships. You can get brand deals, you can get sponsorships, which those picked up a lot last year because the channel was growing relatively rapidly. So I did get some really good sponsorships in the 10 figure, or 10 figure, <laughs> no, not the 10 figure <laughs> range, in the five figure range. So that yeah, was awesome. awesome. Yeah, we've had some pretty big brand deals. So that's another component of that. I personally don't get really into affiliate marketing. And I think that's because this will lead me to my next income source is because I'm kind of promoting my own brand and it's just not something. And I love that. Yes. Yes. (laughs) 
So smart. Once in a while, I, I have a great product that I'll use, like mainly long or whatever with my new horse. He has tons of hair. I've been using that product. So sometimes I'll do a little bit of affiliate marketing, but it, it's typically not my go-to anymore. But I have another income source, which started in October of 2023, October 29th, to be precise. And it is called the Spirited Horse Boutique. So I have always wanted to have something else that's generated as a business from my YouTube channel, because this is a little cynical sounding, but at the end of the day, you don't know, you don't own these platforms. They could be gone. Okay. So that's just the truth of it. And I'm trying to be smart about what I'm building up and to CYA. If you don't know what that means, look it up. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's true. You got to do this. You got to protect yourself. So, and that's another thing before I get into this, don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? That's why I have like an in-person program that has nothing to do with my social media. I actually hardly even post about my lessons. Like people know I do it. I mention it, but it's honestly like such a different ball game. And then obviously the YouTube and then this boutique. So I've always wanted to do this, but I kind of thought to myself, it's going to be really hard to get a business out there right now when you're focusing on your program and your YouTube. So how about just keep that in the back of your mind and build up this following a little bit more, focus on what you're doing. Well, I'm really glad that I went about that because I had started some merch, which is totally separate from the boutique, but that's just, that's part of like the YouTube that's totally separate. So I was doing merch that gave me a little bit ex of experience into what I'm doing now with the boutique, which I just decided, okay, I wear lipstick every day. I ride bitless constantly. Like let's start designing bitless bridles. So a year ago I started doing bitless bridles. I mean, I got in samples after samples, like it was quite the process. And mm -hmm. then I was like, let's do the lipstick. So I spent months like trying to find, you know, a manufacturer and somebody who had the formulas that I wanted and, and all of the packaging and all of that. And I spent every single day, just like I did when I learned my YouTube channel and like how to edit and do all these things, all these different skills. And I just sat there for hours, just like, this is what I need to do. These are the regulations that need to be followed with cosmetics. Like, this is how you build a website. I didn't ever, I don't, I didn't have help. I just am that person that is like, honestly, I'll probably get it done faster if I just figure it out myself. And if you want to get something done correctly, do it yourself in some circumstances. And this is a circumstance where that's the way I did it. So I did all this research. I mean, I built my own website. You know, I I figured out how to get the lipsticks. I designed my own bridles and, and all of that, all of these different things. I got, you know, the tags that had to come in, you know, to put on the bridle. I mean, there's just so many little things that I can't even begin to explain. Like the stickers, it's just nonstop. So then I decided I was going to launch it, you know, right before Halloween. And it was a little delayed because in the beginning I was like, okay, I want to launch this in September, but then, you know, things were taking longer and I hadn't announced a date or anything yet. But once again, leave yourself a little bit of room, a little bit of wiggle room, because that's not that far off. And some things like that are going to be out of your control, but I decided, okay, this is the day I'm going to do it. And I profited the day I launched. That does not that's usually amazing. happen. Like no. wow. all of my stock and the bridles are not cheap. And really the lipstick isn't either to buy up front in, in bulk, right? Like this was, mm -hmm. I knew because I had a following that I wouldn't be, you know, totally screwed or anything like that. But I didn't think it was all going to sell out. All the bridles sold out, all the lipstick sold out in two days. Wow. It was nuts. That's awesome. Yeah. So with that being said, now I'm just continuing to grow with that. And I am now at the point as of, uh, it was a few days ago where I have revenued since October 29th. So revenued over six figures. Oh my God. Jay. Jay. Oh my God. <laughs> awesome. This so is another kinda... inspiration to me <laughs> because so there I... are so many people yeah. out here that are just marketing other people's stuff. And for you to be like, okay, I know I want to do products, but I know it's going to take a lot of work. I know, but I do know what I have in my community. And I do know that I have this marketing ability to market products. So why not market my own? So again, you're not double dipping. Now you're triple dipping. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You have a successful lesson program that like, if all these other things go away, you still love this and you still yep. have this. But on top of that, you're like, well, let me just record what I'm doing, figure out how to edit, 
and get all that out to the world. Now that's running. Okay, now I have this huge marketing juggernaut that I don't even have to pay for. If I'm making a product, I'm going to get free marketing. And I have people already invested in my brand and who I am and want to support me. So now I'm going to create these products that I love. And I love that not all of them are horse related. It's yeah. just mm-hmm. something that everybody sees me wear my lipstick every day and like know yeah. that I'm fancy and I have pretty hair and I got, you know, I'm a girl too. <laughs> and you put that on there in tandem with the horse stuff. Like this is just a master course in business and diversifying, <laughs> like really, because when you put opened up your boutique, I was like, Oh, that's so smart. Lipstick's like her signature. Like that is what you are known for those two things. Like your bitless bridles and your lipstick. What a smart way to jump off in the world of products and tell us, cause I think you have more products coming, right? I saw saddle yeah. pads possibly and some other things that you use. So this is just the beginning for your boutique, correct? Yes. So, and, and just like you were saying, it's so important to be on brand, right? Like it was something that I noticed people were saying that they, they wanted, they, they kept saying, Oh, where'd you get this lipstick? Oh, where'd you get this bridle? And I'm like, well, I'm just going to make it myself. Right. But, um, (laughs) yeah, sorry. What was your question? Can you ask it again specifically? Oh, tell (laughs) us about the future of the boutique and like what your dreams are for that space. Okay. Sorry. I just got excited. I was thinking about all kinds of stuff. (laughs) Yes. I get excited about lipstick. (laughs) So when I was researching marketing, which by the way, all my marketing has been organic. I haven't paid for one dang thing. Not nothing, nothing. But when it comes to starting a business like this, you want to focus on like one to two products. So the lipstick, I don't want to say it was easy, but it was something once you put in like the footwork, and it's if it's an actual good formula, which it is based on, you know, the over hundreds of reviews I've received on it, then you're pretty much set, you know, in, in terms of that. There's still work that goes into it. The bridles are very complicated because every horse's head is different. And and we're still perfecting that, right? Like the bridles aren't like 100% because there's so much that I want to continue developing and different models and stuff. But we pretty much have a good idea that these are our products. They're selling well and the public likes them. Once you're comfortable with that, then you can move on to different products. So I'm actually going to be doing a spring. Well, I have two I'm going to be doing a spring launch that is going to be a new lipstick and then two different products that I have not released before. So they are makeup related. One of them is actually sort of a promotional for Belle because, you know, I think, you know, she was recently diagnosed with shivers, which is super unfortunate. Something that I can do to continue, you know, supporting her. And the other one is related to that, but not the same product. But then, then I'm launching something pretty huge, which it's not necessarily a secret because I've been wearing it, but I'm launching a huge product line, hopefully end of May, early summer. And my goal is that this takes me to the next level because right now, I think a lot of my customers and clients from the Spirited Horse Boutique are my fans, you know, my audience. And that is fantastic because they are authentic. They are going to give it to me straight. They're doing it because they want to support me, but they actually love the products. But I want to scale to the next level. My goal is for this boutique to be a, a million dollar company. Like that is like my actual goal, whether that's crazy, I don't know, but that is what my goal is. So I'm thinking that this product line, this next launch will help scale me to the next level. So that is my focus. And I think eventually it can be attainable because I, it hasn't even been that much time and we already did a hundred K in rev. So it's been incredible. Yeah. Well, and you know, this is something that I have heard a lot, like in the creator industry and you're like on the cutting edge of it because I'm just thinking about Danny Austin. I don't know if you know who she is, but she's just kind of a lifestyle content creator and she created her own skincare line that's called Divi. That's very popular. And, you know, she is still running that and owns it, I think, but the potential to be able to, once your business does get to a point where it's like, okay, this is this huge brand. There are brands out there that have a lot of dollars that are going to come around and like offer to buy that. And like, no one's really going to buy a YouTube channel. I mean, it happens, but like the potential of creating a business like you have created is like things that go on Shark Tank and get sold Mm -hmm. for millions of dollars. And then you can go on to the next thing or create a whole nother brand. Like it is true. Like that is true entrepreneurship, classic entrepreneurship. 
so it's just I mean, you're just blowing my mind now your drive Aww. like your passion for what you're doing you're just so smart but you're so like grounded and authentic at the same time it's just like you are amazing and such an inspiration you are so I hope so kind oh my gosh I just like I, it, I I don't know. My mind is just spinning. I'm I know. Just and away, but like, I'm just sitting here. You guys can't see me when she's talking, but on the other side of the camera, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, so I love it. But not well, only that, say you mm-hmm. do it all with excellence. Like yeah. it's not, nothing you do is half an effort. And it really shows like your boutique and the products that you put out are beautiful. And oh, the color you. selection, like all of it, it's just, it's gorgeous. I'm just in awe. Like this is amazing. And I feel like you're giving us a business 101 lesson. Well, yeah, because, okay. The other, and I know we already talked about this, but the lipstick is just so smart because I feel like I'm going to be a new fan of your channel and I'm not like a horse. I mean, I guess I am a horse lover. I've always loved riding horses, but I'm never going to buy a bit, but I can buy lipstick. I can buy yeah. these beauty products and they're so integral into who you are. It's just so smart. I can't get over it. Well, yes. and that, just like what you said, that's exactly when I was thinking of products. I was thinking of things that were number one, true to my heart. Like this isn't, you know, it's not just about making money. It's like what the lipstick was more yeah. fun. And mm-hmm. I know a lot of my, my um, audience doesn't have a horse, so they're not, they can't buy a bitless bridal. Well, they can, but you know, bitless bridal. See, then, I even said it wrong. <laughs> it's okay. And then the bitless bridles, it's all good. The bitless bridles were more like, this is more of a belief system and and more ethical horsemanship. Like this is a craft, like Mm -hmm. this is to help riders and horses. So there was two sides of it. And I just kind of want to say something that maybe will inspire somebody or motivate them. And I'm trying to think of how to word it. When I sat there or, or when I'm talking to somebody who doesn't know about my channel, or, you know, isn't really familiar, like you guys get it, like, because you're involved, like, you, you know, you interview people, you have your own channel. So you understand what I'm telling you. But when I sit there and tell maybe a stranger, like when we were on our cruise, which is when you reached out to me, Maggie, they were like, what do you guys do for work? And, and, you know, Kyle's like, like, oh I'm gonna... boy. we're gonna unpack well, this can of worms. <laughs> it's so funny, because Kyle's like, you know, I'm an engineer for Ford. And that's, you know, really awesome. And they're, they're almost, and this is not this is not like a stab at anybody, but they're almost like bowing down to Kyle. Like, yes, you're an engineer. Like you have made it in the world. And he has, he is absolutely phenomenal and talented and he has a booming career. But then I sit there and go, I have a writing program, a YouTube channel, and I sell equestrian lipsticks. And they look at me like I'm a Looney Tune. And it's funny because it's (laughs) like, like, little do you know. And then they go, then they go, if they ask me, well, how much money did you get from that channel? I said, just from the channel over six figures. And then they, they, then they're like, well, what do you, it's like their mind can't even process it. So my point is if something sounds ridiculous in your head, like I sell equestrian themed lipsticks, it's not, who you know cares? what I mean? Like yeah. there is a lot of, <laughs> who cares what other people think? Yeah. Just know if you have an idea that sounds a little funny, but you know, based off, you know, your, your analytics and your research and, you know, your understanding it can be so, so successful. And that is my whole point in that. That is my yeah. whole point. People I have, have one no more business idea. question for you. Yes. Because yeah. I love how you said like the, the farm and the lessons is one LLC. You have another yeah. production LLC for your YouTube channel and your social mm-hmm. media stuff, brand partnerships that come in. Mm-hmm. Do you have a separate LLC for the boutique or is that yes. wrapped into one of those? That's that is awesome. the Spirited Horse Boutique LLC and you have to keep them all okay. separate and, and our taxes okay. are absolutely ridiculous. But um, do you have, <laughs> uh, do you have an accountant? Yes. Because of, yes. that just sounds very complex. Okay. Well, cool. Kyle, because he's a, a numbers guy. I mean, he's like genius at math. I'm like sitting here, like, I don't know how to math, but I can ask my husband. <laughs> no, but he sits, he has a massive spreadsheet and he just sits there and, and each company has, you know, you know, the, the income, the expenses, and it's all broken down like so specifically. And each thing that we purchase, almost everything like horse related or something like that is something for the business in some sense. Like it actually is, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, we're very honest about our taxes. We're not just like, oh, we went to dinner, like, right. It, no, 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 no. But a lot of what we do does goes towards the business of some sort. Mm-hmm. So we categorize like, this makes sense for SML, SLM productions or sponsorships. Like I'm creating a video. That's why it's called SLM productions because it's part, mm-hmm. it, it, it is production. I mean, at the end of the day, it is. So 
yes, there are three separate LLCs and <laughs> it's a lot of work, but it's very organized and like the taxes are very fluid and efficient and our tax accountant loves us because she pretty much just has to plug things in. She doesn't really have to yeah. sit there and, you know, and we have to save all the receipts. I mean, it's nuts, but that's important for oh business. Like you got to understand like the legal, the legalities of it too. Yeah. It's not just, yeah, there's a lot. Especially, that. I mean, just so people know, I mean, this is just uh -huh. like business 101, but having an LLC protects your assets. So I have an LLC that's an S corp and I actually pay myself. I'm only the, the only employee of pretty distressed mm -hmm. LLC. And um, I take a very small salary. <laughs> we keep the rest kind of like in there for investing yeah. and stuff like that. But if someone were to watch one of my videos and like use a saw, even though I have all the disclaimers on there about like, please read all your stuff before you do this. If they injure their self with a saw, well, I saw this on Christina's video, so I'm going to sue her. My house is protected. Our cars are yes. protected because they are not owned by the LLC. So what that's Correct. doing is just shielding your personal assets that you own as a person or with your spouse from being taken away. So people can't take my house away. They can't take, they can't go after our bank accounts. They can't go after my 401k, anything like that. So everything's just contained in that LLC. And it's really important to have because people are, people be cray, man. Yeah, and if yeah. you're putting yourself out there, yeah, you definitely want to protect yourself. And so I love just that all three of those are separated because in my mind, I'm like, oh my gosh, that sounds crazy. But it also makes sense at the same time. Yeah. You yeah. definitely yeah. want to have an LLC. Yeah. Well, something I kind of want to shift gears a little bit. We've been talking a lot on this podcast about the idea of creating content around your core principles. And I sense that when I watch your stuff, but I'd love to hear more about like just kind of overarching like your mission and core principles that you keep in mind <clears throat> when you're creating content, when you're doing all of your stuff for all of your businesses and what that kind of mission is for you and your business. Yes. So we've talked a lot about the business side of things and sort of more, you know, the story behind it. But my actual mission at Free Spirit Equestrian is to find horses in need from all walks of life and work with them for one to five years and then eventually rehome them. And I do this because it's not a rescue, right? Rescues are getting rescue horses and oftentimes they're super emaciated or they need rehab. And once in a while, I will take in a horse like that, but I'm not a nonprofit. I do not take donations um, in order to fund my horses. It is all self self funded. And that is true to my core. So I do this because there are so many horses out there that may not be in a great situation, or maybe they are in a great situation, but they just need more miles or more experience, or they need a lot of training. And I work with them and then eventually rehome them to a perfect family or home so that I can help the next horse. So that is my actual whole entire purpose of what I do. And that's why on the channel, you see a lot of, you know, my daily life, but a lot of the training and the horse's story. So it's all about the horse. And I stay true to that. And, you know, there's been a lot of situations that have come up where it's like, sometimes, you know, you want to lean towards this or that. But at the end of the day, I'm always sticking to my mission and my values. And I want to say, I never do anything because of the channel. Like, I don't sit there and go, wow, I'm going to buy this horse because they're going to be great for my channel and blow it up. Mm -hmm. You know wow. what I mean? I never, ever, I, I honestly don't think I'm like capable of thinking that way because what I do is so true. Like I can't mm -hmm. fake what I do here. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't fake this. Like I have to go out and take care of the horses every day and bust my butt. And we're not millionaires. Not yet. But I'm just kidding. Yeah. But yeah. I think you're well on your way, girl. I hope. That's my goal. Just so I can, just so I can help more horses. Like that's all it comes yeah. down to. Like, I don't care about like fancy this. That. I just want more horses to help whatever. But anyways, like just staying true to that, that what I'm doing, it's because I love it and because I care about the horses and their success and to better them as much as I possibly can. Like even when I bought Lumiere, he is um, a really beautiful, fancy, expensive horse, but I didn't go, wow, if I buy him, I'm going to get so many views. Like I bought him because this has always been a horse I've been very drawn to and his personality was great. And he, he needed some work. So I'm like, I can get this horse and work with him. And he's one I'll probably end up keeping because he is my end-all, be-all dream horse. 
but I never once was like, oh, he's going to generate income for me. So many views. No, because you can't depend on that. If you think like that with YouTube, you're going to, I guess it could happen, but you're going to be dissatisfied because you, you just never know how videos are going to perform. So I think if you want to be like a content creator, you need to be true in what you're doing and not have any expectations because it, it changes so much and just be authentic. And that's the other thing. So my channel, like you were saying earlier, it's very, it's authentic. It is educational and it's realistic. And I'm just doing what I do and sharing my truth and my story. And I think people are drawn to it just from my understanding, because like I said, I'm not this person that, that just comes from money. And, and I even will get comments from people saying, wow, I just have to apologize to you. And they'll write this long paragraph comment saying, when I first saw your channel, I, I really feel bad because I, I, my instant thought was, oh, you know, this girl wears lipstick, like blah, blah, blah. Like she just, you know, came from money and has horses. And they say, and I've got this quite a few times, boy, was I wrong. They're like, once I started mm -hmm. to watch your channel, like, no, you actually didn't come from all this money. You didn't come from a horse background. You bought this yourself with your husband and you've built, you've built upon everything you have. So that's super encouraging and, and inspiring, especially for somebody to like admit that publicly and read that is incredible. So that's how I know that I truly am making some type of impact and that I am sticking to my values. And I think that's why people want to support me. I think that's why. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's really important to me to just make it about the horses. Cause I mean, that's why I'm doing this. I mean, nobody would do this. Nobody in their right mind would have 11 horses and actually take care of them properly if they didn't love it. Because there's some days it sucks. It sucks because it's hard. And sometimes horses get sick or injured, or sometimes they have to be put down. And there's just really sad and awful things that can happen too. But it's, it's just a labor of love. So yeah. Hopefully I love that. that. And it's inspiring for people who don't, who like me, who have never grown up around horses and just to see that and the beauty behind them and just the way that you treat all of them with like such dignity. And I don't know, there is something special about like the, your true passion and love for these animals does come through. Um, just as someone who's never really been around like the horse life, the equestrian life. Yeah. <laughs> but I love also because everybody we know, everybody I know around here, there are lots of horses around here. We live in an area where there's certain cities like around us that have lots of horse riding lessons of, you know, more of that. So you yeah. can talk about that, but it is like a tends to be a like family thing. Like you grew up with it and it does take a lot of money. So yeah. I don't know yes. if you can speak to that. A little no, bit. I was telling Shay before we started recording too, that it's your channel has been such an encouragement to my daughter because yes, it, we're in Tennessee and horse riding is almost a legacy thing. Or if you come from money, like that's how you get to be involved in horses and she her lifelong dream is to do what you do and have her own horse farm and she uh, and she's been saving up for a horse since she was like four. I, yes <laughs> she's been getting a, yeah <laughs> and so she hears your story and it's like oh it it can be possible for me too and I think that is such a fun thing about social media and us getting to interview all of these people who show us what's possible, like right in all these different areas, whether it's cars, whether it's horses, whether it's DIYing your house, like creators like you show us what's possible with some consistency, some hard work, and just taking advantage of the opportunities in front of you. And so I think that is just so neat. I love it. I love it too. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, so tell us, what would be your advice to somebody who's starting out, passionate about a certain thing and thinking about getting involved in content creation and starting to document what they're doing and share it with the world? What would you, your just intro advice to them be? I would tell them to, of course, start researching, start watching YouTube channels that are actually designed to help new content creators. They give you so much advice. I've watched quite a few of them and they were a godsend. I mean, they truly helped me figure out so many different aspects of it. So do your research, okay? Read articles, 
watch YouTube videos, do that every single day. It can be for 30 minutes. It can be for a couple hours. Sorry. But if you do that every, <laughs> what other one, but if you do that, <laughs> if you do that every single day, think about where you'd be in a month. Like you'd have hours of research put into that. So just start by doing that. Then hit record, just do it. Just film. I would just start with like a day in the life or if you have some kind of like whatever your content topics are, just start with some topic and just film it. It's going to suck. It's going to totally suck. Okay. And that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. You got to keep putting these videos out and you're not going to be good after 10 videos. You're not even going to be good after a hundred videos. It's going to take several hundred videos to really get your craft down. And even then, like, I will go and look back at videos that were three months ago. I was like, oh, I can't believe this. Why did I do that? Like, that's not good. So it, that's just always going to be the case because you're always going to get better if you keep doing it. Practice makes perfect. Okay. And you're not looking for perfection. You're looking for progress. That's, that's what you need to do. Hit record, do it. You're not going to like how you sound on camera. Oh, you know, I don't like this angle or, oh, I did this. It doesn't matter. You just have to do it and get better. And then people will start realizing that you also need to figure out what your niche is. You can't, I'm sorry. You can't just walk out there and say, oh, I'm going to eat at Applebee's today. And then, you know, I'm going to go do this. There has to be some sort of niche. So figure out what you want to put out there to the world and get, get good at that. Be an expert. Even if you have a little bit of information, more information than the general public does about a certain topic or subject, that's enough to start a channel. And that's exactly what I did. I, I don't think I'm the end all be all horse trainer. I'm not the, you know, an Olympic level rider. I didn't come from this background, but I was like, I've owned horses for years and I've learned through basically like self teaching myself, even horse stuff. And I want to share my journey. And that's what happened. So I think you just have to stay consistent too. A lot of people think that they're going to get, you know, all these views really fast or, oh man, I'm only getting a hundred views. I'm only getting this and that doesn't matter. I mean, there was time like for a few months, I was only getting a hundred or a few hundred views. It's got to start somewhere, but eventually it's going to catch on and storytelling. Again, this is going to depend on exactly what your content is, because like, if you're a channel that's talking about YouTube channels, you're not necessarily telling a story. You might add in personal touches, but storytelling is huge. I think mm -hmm. that's another reason my channel um, has done relatively well is because it's still realistic, but I'm also telling somewhat of a story. Like my life is a story, like put it in, in that, in that format, but in a realistic way and think about how you want to captivate people. I think people are drawn in by a lot of emotion. Sometimes, sometimes I have a lot of emotion or excitement involved in my videos or educational it has to be one of those things. But if you can, if you can combine a vlogging, an educational and an emotional experience, that's going to be huge for not only a channel, but even specifically like certain videos, like the auction ones. People go nuts. You know why? Because number one, it's it's a unique situation. Not everybody goes and looks at a hundred, like several hundred horses to thousands. It's also educational because I'm giving them tips and advice. It's also super exciting because I might buy a horse. And which one am I going to buy? <laughs> which one right? are you going to get? It's like, it's like The Bachelor for horses. Right. right. <laughs> or is she not going to get a horse? Or what's going to happen? Like, what's going to happen? It's the whole mystery of it all but it's, it's authentic because this is really happening and then once if you get a horse then it's very exciting or, or whatever the case may be there's there's a lot of like build up but all those things are put into that one video and that's why they perform so well is because people get all of these experiences and emotions and tactics in one video but if you can base your channel off those things then it's going to it's going to be successful Oh my gosh, that's such good advice. And I just want to be an encouragement to people. If you think, oh, my thing that I'm really into that I love is too niche and there's not a market for it, just try and see because you would be surprised. There are a lot of people in the world and they have access to YouTube. Like we're not just talking about your state, mm -hmm. your city, even your country. Like people watch from all over the world. And you know, if you collect comic books, if you collect coins, if you're really into, I don't know, going to like those dress up things, the like the con, the Comic Con yeah. things, like there is a market for that stuff. And it, and I think just how passionate you are about what you do is also a reason why you're so successful. So if you have something that you really, really love, even if it's really niche, like don't be afraid to share it with the world because you never know. You and you might know. be introducing somebody who would never have access to that, to that thing. And maybe they fall in love with it too. So 
such you're such an inspiration i've just loved this interview so much thank you i know i know just one the last thing i want to ask you is i'm just curious after looking back on your whole journey like what would you say has been the most rewarding part of it for you personally as you're looking back on all that you've accomplished um not only on youtube but in your boutique in your lesson program like what is the most rewarding part for you i think honestly there isn't for me it's about the little wins so there isn't this end all be all of like this is it i i would say talking from a like a technical standpoint like seeing the income that was brought in for 2023 after like we finished like our spreadsheets that was kind of like a oh my gosh like i'm actually doing this and not not just about money but the fact that there's so many things involved behind that like people like the views that I'm getting money from is because people are invested or the products is because people want to support. It, it was almost like this community supports me like so much that this is, this is crazy, but there's so many different things. Like, I think it was, I guess if I could say like the biggest milestone, and this was kind of before the success actually happened was that with that government job, like that was a, a an okay paying job, right? Like it, it was a good paying job, but and I was, I was taking a risk by just quitting that. I mean, that's what I went to school for. I thought I was going to be going down a different path. I had been getting promoted a lot within, you know, the government and to throw that all away, essentially, it was a little bit scary. And, and even Kyle at the time, because he is an engineer, he is practical, even though he was supportive of the YouTube channel, which came after and like, he believed in me. He's more of like an air in the side of caution type person where I'm like, I literally can't do this anymore. And I'm just going to take the risk, like whatever, uh, calculated risk. So I think it was right when I actually quit and the lesson program just exploded. Like, I think I went from 15 students to 42 in like two weeks. I mean, it, it, it completely exploded. And I think that was the moment where I'm like, I can truly be an entrepreneur because that, that was my own business. Like I was, I'm like, I am an entrepreneur, like this is it. And then it's just built up upon like throughout that process. And I, and I, and it's just the little wins of seeing students accomplish something and seeing them overcome fears and seeing them grow. Cause I have students that have been here for five years, right. And seeing them starting there and where they're at today is it's so incredible. And, and with the horses, seeing horses that I purchased that knew absolutely nothing that were completely discarded by society and the community and seeing that horse transform and blossom into all of their luster because somebody put in time, love, consistency, effort. And to see that horse flourish in the horse industry, that's part of it. And then the YouTube channel, to see people really connect and actually feel quite unbelievably connected where they feel as though they know you, they, they feel a part of the horses. They are so connected, like actually, like emotionally connected to you is crazy, but also so incredible to see the comments and stuff and everything that pours in. And then to see people support this business, you kind of decided to start and put in all this effort and to see them actually come through and, and support you and love it. It's all these little wins. Well, they're, some of them are big wins combined that it's just this ball of explosion of just happiness and and inspiration and and all those things also inspire me like these these people that are putting in this love pouring in this love in this community and my students that fuels me like that's like yes i just want to keep going i want to keep climbing i want to keep doing this for the horses and for the people again not like for the channel like to get views but mm -hmm. these people love this i need to keep doing this like yes it's inspiring me to continue following through with my mission and doing what I would be doing if regardless if I had a YouTube channel or not. So I think it's all like a combination. Wow. That's amazing. Okay. So as you're telling that story, I'm just picturing eight-year-old little Shay, like in my mind. And I just see you like saying to her, we own a horse and just like the joy and excitement of just 
that one thing, but then to see how you've taken that one small thing that you did, like when you were 17 and what you've turned it into, it just reminds me of that verse of like, when you're faithful with little, like, I know I can trust you with more and your life is just an example of that. And you get to share that with the world. And it's just like, it's just a beautiful picture, just everything about your story, everything that you've put your hand to. So if you don't have enough people in your life telling you, just the Cypress Room wants to tell you what you have built is beautiful. And I know that there's just going to be more and there's going to be an abundance. And everybody says like, oh, the other shoe is going to drop. The other shoe is going to drop. But for you, I don't think it's going to. And it is just going to be this ripple effect that you may never know the full reach of it. But on those days that maybe you're feeling discouraged or down, I just want you to remember that like there is more and there's this abundance for you. And there's a reason that you're being blessed and just continue to to keep pouring out the way that you do. And I think it'll keep coming into you the way that it has. So it's just very beautiful to know your story. Yeah. And I agree. I, as you're like telling us this story, I was just thinking, man, like you'll probably never even know like the impact and this like ripple effect of what you're putting out into the world and like how it's giving little girls hope, like that they can one day own a horse or you know, just inspiring even somebody to start a business around their passion. Like, I just think it is so impactful what you're doing, not only for horses, not only for your audience watching who are also horse lovers, but for entrepreneurs, like what you have done is nothing short of incredible. You've done it all with excellence. Like I can sense the joy. I think your confidence is very inspiring to me. I mean, I don't know if that's a natural confidence, but you just come across like just a very confident person and you don't strike me as somebody who gets stuck in that fear cycle. You just like go for it. And I love that. It's very inspiring to me because I have a tendency to get stuck in that fear cycle. And I need somebody to be like, no, you just got to go. You just got to step forward. So I love that about you. And it, this conversation has just been super fun and inspiring for me. Yeah. Um. So thank you for sharing your whole journey. Thank you for those kind words. That is, that is seriously so sweet of you to say. And it honestly inspires me. It continues it, that fuel. Like when people believe in you it just gives you even more of a boost like like i said in the beginning it's hard because you don't have anybody who's going to believe in you because you're just starting somewhere and there's not any people that have discovered you it's a lot about discoverability as well but then the fact that people see it and they like it it's just like what it just i think honestly they fueled people have fueled my passion to take it to these next levels and just hearing those things like i really do appreciate it because like you said i am a down to earth person I don't think I'm all high and mighty or anything like that. I truly am just me doing me. And just to hear those people say those things, it's it's so kind and it's just so motivational. And I really appreciate it. Thank you. And I, yeah, like I said, yeah. I think you guys, you guys are so professional and well-rounded. And this has been the most incredible interview I've ever done. I just feel so comfortable. Oh. <laughs> but I feel like it's, again, it's so meaningful and the videos and the podcasts that you're putting out there are going to inspire people. You guys are inspiring people by doing this. You're inspiring people by getting other people to talk. Like it's so well-rounded. It's incredible. Oh, oh thank you. And so I just, much. I've, I've heard you say this and I just want to echo it too. Like, anybody can do this. Is every going to, is everybody going to be successful? No, they're not. I'm going to be honest with you, but anybody can try and see because yeah, I'm sure if people would have said to you three years ago, oh, you're going to have a six figure channel, YouTube channel, you'd be like, ha ha ha, that, okay, that's really funny. Sure. But it's just like, we're not special. We are not special. We are all special and we're not special at the same time. So yes. like, don't, like Maggie just said, like push through that fear. Like everybody is unique. Everybody was formed special. You're the only person who has your DNA. You're the only person who has your fingerprint. You have something to say. So why the worst that can happen is that it doesn't work out. So don't let that fear stop you because I just can't imagine if you wouldn't have started your channel. Like I just can't imagine. So I, I just, changed my I just life. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we're going to move into favorite things. Yes. 
And we want you to go first because, I mean, you have your own boutique. So we want to hear about one of your fabulous favorite things. things. So we're going to let you start. So by default, obviously, I love my lipsticks. I have, I'm wearing this Bay Girl today um, and then my Galloping and Gold Lip Gloss. So I love my products, honestly, because they're made in the USA. They're gluten-free, vegan, paraben-free, all the things. So it was really important to me with cosmetics to have all of those features, essentially. And everybody, like friends, family, has loved the formulas. And I just love wearing them. And the variety that I've, I've been able to add new ones since starting. So they're my favorite products, plus the Bitless Bridles. I love seeing my horses in them because, obviously, I think they're gorgeous because I designed them. So... But I actually, but I like about what I like about them is I'm very much so, oh, I'm wearing, you know, I have a purple saddle pad on my horse. Like I want my brow band to match. Like it's just something in my brain. If it doesn't match, I'm like, I can't do this. So, (laughs) so the snap out brow bands, I can just quickly remove them and put the different colored crystal brow band on. So it's just fun, but, but functional. And I know we wanted to talk about favorite podcasts. Well, obviously yours, but I think you guys are going to be thrown a little off guard. I don't know if you know him, but my favorite podcaster is, and he's a YouTuber, is Mr. Ballin. I don't know this one. If I'm not doing horses, this sounds absolutely crazy. The way I relax is to listen to mystery and murder podcasts. That is Uh, what I love. I love it. So that is my favorite podcast. It's actually not horse related. I would say when it comes to podcasts, I actually don't listen to a lot of horse ones because everything I do is horses. I mean, I do a lot of research and if I need specific information, I will seek out a horse podcast or watch YouTube videos or something. But other than that, I'm straight up listening. You know, I'm at 7.30 a.m. I'm driving to get my coffee and I'm listening about how Betsy Sue, you know, is found in a ditch and... (laughs) I can't listen to that stuff, Jay. I am like... (laughs) Way too emotionally, spiritually sensitive, and I can not listen to stuff. I love, you know, so many people do, and they just like get so into it. So I love that. That's so. so I just love the whole mystery. I think it's fascinating, not just about yeah. like, murder, but things in general, like mysteries of the world, um, all of that. So I'd say those are my favorite podcasts because everything else I do is horse. So. Oh, yeah. I love that. That makes sense with your criminal justice background. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's always been fascinating. <laughs> okay. So do you want to go next? Yeah. I have, since we're like, since this was so inspiring, I'm going to go with a different thing today because I just got a book that was just released and it's available on Amazon and it's called Welcome to the Basement by Tim Ross. And he is one of my favorite podcasters right now. And he's honestly been like an inspiration for us to even start the Cypress room and like what a podcast looks like. And like, you can just talk like this free form for an hour and a half and just have a conversation and welcome people in. And it doesn't have to be programmed and it doesn't have to be like, so formulaic. I mean, he was one of those people that inspired me and just this book, it's called welcome to the basement. And it's all about, um, he explains a little bit more, but I'll just give you like a 30 second clip is about being down in the basement and being vulnerable with people with a whole group of people. And just like being down in the trenches with people is a better way to live than being on the penthouse on the top floor with all the fancy shiny things that it's better to be down in the basement and be vulnerable and be authentic and be real than try to be in that penthouse. And that's kind of his whole philosophy behind his podcast that he runs. And so this book is just an extension of this and he is an entrepreneur as well. So he has just started this podcast in the last year and a half and has just taken off. So this is just another way that I can support him as part of his community. I bought his book. And if you've never listened to his podcast, his book would be a great introduction to that. And I think you're going to really love the philosophy of the basement. So check that That's out. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, I decided to do my favorite show that I've been watching lately And it's on Netflix and it's all about Formula One and it's called Drive to Survive. Okay. And I, I, first of all, I love documentaries, but I especially love, and this makes sense why we're doing this podcast. I love the behind the scenes Mm -hmm. of anything. I love hearing how things work, how things play out, what goes into something. And that's what this is all about the Formula One season. And they go behind the scenes with all the teams and talk about the races and how they're successful and what all goes into it. And 
Yeah. Now, are you watching this with your husband? Because it sounds like something he would enjoy. Yes. Okay. Yes. And it is, that is another good thing because he and I rarely agree on TV shows. And so this is one well, that I we can watch together. I don't know if you want to like give away this much personal information, but like you two have another connection. Yes. Did you my husband her? also works for Ford Shay. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> He's not an engineer though. He's in sales and marketing, but yeah. He's Amazing. He's for Ford over 15 years And you're in Tennessee. Well. Yes, but we lived in Michigan. Okay. Twice. Yeah. I was going to say, you got to um, have lived here at least for a little bit. Yeah, we've lived there two times, but now we're in Tennessee. So yes, another that is amazing. State. So my husband loves Michigan. We spent a lot of time in Michigan, has dear friends Michigan's there. Michigan's great. Michigan state. So we have lots of connections. Yes, yes. super and cool. And we lived Small in the world. Midwest. Both of us lived, we met in Minnesota. She lived in Michigan. I was born in Ohio. I also lived in Illinois. So we're Midwestern girls. So when you're talking about like the snow, sometimes it's snowing and <laughs> yep. sometimes it's 80. We're like, oh, yeah, we remember that. Yeah. I lived in Chattanooga for a year too. Oh, Ooh, nice. mm-hmm. so pretty down there. Yes, it's Love cool. It. Well, I this guess has that... been my favorite. Yeah. Been great. Yeah. It's been so much fun having you just Thank you, Shay, yeah. for your vulnerability, for your willingness to come on this podcast and share all the behind the scenes of what you have done to make Free Spirit Equestrian such a success, not only in the YouTube space, but outside of YouTube as well. Like That is just fascinating. And I think so many people are just going to be able to glean so many good nuggets of wisdom from you. And just so you guys know, we will link to Shay's boutique, to her YouTube channel, all the different ways, her TikTok, so that you can go find her and follow her if you don't already. We'll also put links down there to our favorite things so you can go check those out. Be sure to go check us out on Instagram and follow us there. Be part of our community. And we will be back again soon with another podcast for you. So until next time, see you later. Bye.